hello everyone. My name is Sean. Welcome to the LTG show. My name is Sean Wilburn, and today I am joined with Tony Hannity's. What's up, guys? Uh, Victor Bagna. Hey. And Andrew Lee. Ah, uh, tops of the morning to you, mate. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's had too many energy drinks or something. He thinks he's uh, Irish. Irish. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <That's> Scottish. <laughs> well, you know, well, Our fans across the pond are cringing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about it. Just weird. I don't, I don't know about anything about that. Though. Anyway, so, guys, everyone, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, this is our, well, new show. We're going to go ahead and talk about many different topics today, including the recent uh, changes at Microsoft with Steve Ballmer. Um, Amazon's possibly testing their own wireless network. We got some other information about Google, Google possibly hanging out or thinking about some NFL stuff. Release date for the Xbox One rumor, and a very interesting speech by Kevin Spacey that I definitely we, we want to discuss about like future of TV programming and how things work. Um, but uh, before we do that, let me give some contact information. You can email us at uh, comments at lazytechguys.com, or you can give us a call at area code 707-722-5299. All right, now. Let's get started, and let's start talking about Microsoft and Steve Ballmer and the big change there. So it looks like, well, there's, well, Microsoft, I mean, Steve Ballmer has announced that he is going to be retiring from the CEO position within the next year. Microsoft is now um, tasked with finding him, finding a replacement for him and getting another person in here to go ahead and run the company and kind of move them into this long-term change that the company is looking to do. Now, uh, a little bit of information. There, uh, there is now a new board and committee that is assigned to help find a new replacement. Um, it's led by a gentleman named John Thompson, and if other people on the board include include people like, of course, Bill Gates, among some other folks, including like the chief of, um, I think, the financial chief and some other folks like that. So, Steve Ballmer, guys, he's on his way out. This, it seems like it's partially his decision, but it doesn't look like the board is doing anything to stop him from leaving, you know. So, guys, this is the big news, big deal. So what was your initial take on this, your original feel about this? Let's get some new blood up there. Maybe a new direction. Not the band. <laughs> but, um, whatever. No, That's but the, um, and I'm sad to see that you know that. But you are you are in the music industry, so it's okay. You you get that one pass. Okay, so um, <laughs> their song is very pop, dude. That's all. I know. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. No. When this uh, came about, what was it on Friday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day it was, um, I was a little surprised. But you know, he says that he's going to retire within a year, so we don't know if that means three months or if he's going to do the whole the whole twelve month thing. But um, I was listening to a couple of analysts talk about um, his leadership. At Microsoft, and you know, uh, he was there pretty much from from day one, and he's been driven with Microsoft ideology. And at this point in time, uh, with devices and software, I mean, that was his mantra. That that's the thing that he really wants to go into 2013 with. Uh, that's not really working. And I don't know if they're going to hire within Microsoft. Um, they lost a lot of good talent, like uh, Steven Sanofsky, you know, just recently. So I don't know where exactly they could go. Maybe pull somebody from Google. Maybe maybe uh, even somebody from Apple. But I think they need someone with an outside perspective to direct them into uh, some some more success. Because right now, if it wasn't for the Xbox One, I don't necessarily think that we would be uh, seeing Microsoft as um, as a company that is evolving into something b bigger. Hmm. All right, so um, you mentioned long term, and that's actually kind of where we're at. Like, I'm sure they're going to hire outside. As you mentioned, a lot of people have left internally in the company, and, um, and those are very, very talented people. The I wonder, like, okay, we, I'm confident they're going to go outside, but I'm more worried about the direction and what kind of changes. Like, do you guys think, like, just by putting that new head in there, is that really going to make the difference at Microsoft? Do you think is that the big thing they need to change the culture, especially considering how most likely Ballmer is going to stay on the board of directors, and the board of directors will consist of people like Bill Gates and other people who've been there for a long time who've kept things moving a certain way. So 
do you guys think all they need is just a new CEO and all of a sudden, I mean, is that the big, like, catalyst to make some change it there? BJ? I don't, no, I don't, I don't think so. But like, like you're saying, a new direction might be the way to do it. I mean, I, I can't, because, uh, you know, seeing, like, in, in businesses, like, how entrenched, like, you know, windows and offices and, and you know, businesses all over. I, I this, what, you know, what we see in, in our, uh, you know, in, in our world is like, you know, Windows Phone is not as, as widely used as, you know, iPhones or, or uh, um, you know, Android and stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're still in, you know, businesses all over the place with, you know, their their uh with their office suite so it I so I I don't know I don't <laughs> I guess my point is I don't see how like it's it's not gonna it's uh, I don't think it's gonna tank them but so I don't think they're exactly hurting as bad as we think they are but <laughs> I mean they're, 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 no, no but, I was just gonna say they're not really growing though. Like right, right. You know, they're they're not really so, evolving in in uh, with anything software or hardware wise. That at this point, from a, whether we're a tech stance or even a consumer stance, that we we need to see come uh, see coming out of them. Because like right now, they're I'd say other OEMs are creating some pretty cool products. Like there's the Samsung. Native Q, which is a tablet that runs both Windows 8 as well as Android. So that's kind of cool, but that's not Windows. Microsoft can't take credit for that. So, you know, and they had the whole debacle with the uh, Surface RT, which at this point is they're just kind of trying to fire sale and get it out of there so they can try to reinvest and do something else uh, in the in the consumer market. I right. think, like you said, they're in business. They're in enterprise, and they are... The, they're everywhere with that, so maybe really break up the company and say, okay, this is Microsoft Enterprise. You guys just deal with that. This is Microsoft Consumer, and we'll have like a separate CEO for that. The, you know, and I'm sure they have something did like they, that right now. Did but they, they do don't. that in the past. Like at one point, then they had like three leaders, and I, I mean, have to look I, back on it. I, again, I, I don't know. If I remember I'm, not, right. I'm not sure about that. All right. So for, how about this? From one, a gamer's perspective, and from a PC, wire, uh, Windows PC perspective, Andrew, what is your take on, like, Bomber leaving? Do you think overall, do you feel maybe in the gaming world this is, like, something good for Microsoft in the long run, or do you think this is just more turmoil about to happen all around? I don't know. It's really hard to say. I mean, honestly, I would say I would probably agree with Tony that, you know, Microsoft does need some type of revitalization of some sort. And, you know, perhaps a new CEO would bring that, whether it's internally through Microsoft or from an outside source. But, um, you know, the whole debacle with the whole Xbox One deal is just, you know, honestly, it would probably just, I, I think it would just help out. But, I mean, that that's just my prediction. I don't know exactly how exactly that would work. But I, I guess the, the key word is growth, right? I mean, it's... Yeah. And, and that's where... I think this whole question of what whether it's going to help Microsoft or not, it's you're going to get different answer from different different types of people, right? I mean, because it's mm -hmm. it's like we all see Microsoft differently, so it's I mean that's just you know from being a big company and stuff, they're successful in some areas, and I, I guess they're they're not in others, but so you know I'm going to go ahead and say something that I actually as crazy as this is, believe that having a new person up there and having the new figure could actually make a difference, a bigger difference than what we're thinking. And it's more of just um, culture more than anything else. And the other thing is this. So as Bomber's been there, he's been there since 2001. And as we mentioned before, we um, they've gone through quite a different, different people and they've lost a lot of big talent. And they probably have skipped ideas. Like um, some ideas didn't work out like the Ken and some launches weren't very good. Other things like Windows 7 did work out and other things did go right. The um, I'm just thinking that if you get another CEO, maybe that person will be able to see 
these things that could work. They could possibly see these technologies that should have worked. Like, maybe, like one thing that's constantly talked about from Microsoft is Jay Allard's um, the tablet. Uh, it was called the Courier. And people constantly, and they always say how important the Courier is, how big or how cool this thing really, really, truly could have been. Now, what if Microsoft did take that route? Maybe they didn't have, maybe they didn't, um, maybe they probably wouldn't have won the tablet game, or maybe, but maybe it would have kind of took some of the wind out of Apple's sail. Maybe the company could have been stronger if the CEO had noticed these things better. I'm thinking that by having a new CEO and a new vision, maybe these other great ideas from these hundreds of, I mean, these thousands of people that work at that very big company that entices pretty much a whole city. I'm just wondering if they, those, some of those ideas could have really been able to come into life and really start moving the company forward and started getting those increases to stop the status quo of where everything was right now. So um, real quick, I just want to go ahead and let everyone know, especially for the people who are listening, that we now have the uh, fifth and final member of LTG has finally joined us, Radford Castro. What's going on, guys? We mentioned the word Microsoft. And now it's a boy band. Get in here. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Turned off his One Direction and jumped in here. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, thanks for letting me borrow the track, dude. I was yeah. planning to turn the CD yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I like Rad. Yeah. All right. So, uh, now, like I said, so Rad, just a quick. Were you able to listen to what was happening beforehand? Hmm. Were you able to listen to what was going before the as a conversation beforehand or? No, because I was trying to adjust the sound settings. <laughs> All right. So pretty much what it what it is is I mean I'm, they got a new CEO. I'm curious on what the changes of like a new. I'm saying that a new CEO might help out and might help him recognize different things. And um, they're really curious now. Tony, you want to say something about the Ken because I brought it up and I mentioned it there. No, I just I just found it funny that you remembered about it because I totally forgot and I had one. I had a kin too. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Rad, but not so all. That, yeah, not all. Not all ideas are good ideas. So yeah, my thing is. You mean like the Newton? <laughs> my thing is this: if like, it's hard to say whether a new CEO will make the change and be instantly change the culture, but a new CEO might be able to see things and get certain products out there that, or move the company forward in a direction that would make it more profitable, and might be able to see these little things. Are you guys just talking about random stuff? Like, do you guys actually follow Microsoft? No. (laughs) No, I'm just. You guys just just talking out of your asses. Hey, Brad, this is yeah. my question for you. Go for my, it. My question was, do you think the CEO change is enough to really make a, a, enough of a change at Microsoft to really move things forward or make the changes that they feel they need to make? That was my, I think, that's the question. Uh, they would have to. I, I think this whole thing was uh, um, uh, planned for... I, mean, I think this was sort of planned that they, they wanted to get it out, and I think this all came from Bomber. He knows that he's, his time is up. And he's at the limit. It's like getting stuck with Alex Smith and you got Colin Kaepernick now. So I'm serious. No, like no, you know, no. that's that's really what's happening. I mean, he's he's uh, he was not really uh, Bill Gates was a CEO, and then Bomber was the guy that was there because he was a rah rah CEO. You know, he was someone that was you know that was a marketing guy, a sales guy, but he wasn't a technical guy. You know what I mean? So Bill Gates was a technical guy. Reed Hastings is a technical guy. Um, you know, um, Marissa Mayer, she's a technical person. So it's, that's what they kind of need. They don't have someone like that. And that's what happened with, um, that's what's been happening with Bomber. And uh, he knows he's hitting the limits with that. Thanks, Windows Phone. <laughs> but it's, um, he's been only lucky because he's had the right senior team, but he still has to make, he has to still come up with a clear vision of where he wants that company to be rather than just say, oh, we're all going to do Windows and all these devices. It's not that simple. So. All right. So, all right. So, my other next the one. The culture, here. yeah. Yeah. So you're they, thinking, yeah, the culture change. I'm thinking that by having the new CEO, it's enough. It would really, really start to move. It possibly could move Microsoft in the right direction. Yeah. Really just getting more ideas in there, more th- people could, people who have ideas that maybe aren't getting, like, um, answer, getting the attention that they were hoping for from the CEO can now maybe get a better light, or maybe he'll see, maybe the new CEO will see something saying, wait a minute. That's a great idea. Let's move forward this product a little bit more. So, well, actually, it was that simple. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, do you guys listen to Windows Weekly on Twit? Like, I, I really, I don't listen to a lot of the podcasts except that one. In particular, was very interesting because uh, um, uh, Mary Jo Foley actually had an interview 
with uh, with Bomber, and uh, she was actually sad that she was going to leave. And but I had the opposite feeling. I was actually not so sad. You know what I mean? And the funny part of it too is that she she was also mentioning how uh, that like okay it's great you know he's gonna be gone you know uh, there's some people that are like saying okay he's gonna be gone but then you know you can't ignore the fact that he's done some good things but he's also done some bad things um, but at the same time like uh, I'm just thinking who is it going to be who's and one of them <laughs> I don't know if you ever even there were like a list of like five or six people and they're all over the internet like all these people have been speculating who would be the next CEO and they had like five people that they're thinking. One of them would be Reed Hastings. One of them would be Steven Sanofsky. Another one would be someone from out of the blue. But the other two would probably be um, in the Ben inside. Affleck. Ben <laughs> Affleck. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> Horrible. So do you think, Red? So do you I would think make a petition for that too. <laughs> How many you think they're gonna go out? Um, I think they would have to go inside. So they you're gonna stay inside. I th- yeah. I'm thinking they're gonna go out. Tony, you thought they were gonna much. go out. Yeah, I think too I much. thought out. Nope. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> too complicated. Way too complicated. Okay. Dude, Microsoft is already too complicated. It's a pretty... It is complicated. <laughs> well, and, that's, and that's kind of what we were saying earlier, like, that before you got on, is that Microsoft means different things to different people, and so it's like... Yeah, that's right. This, this is a hard question to answer. What does it mean for Microsoft, like, whether it's going to be good or bad? Because it's... It, there's... They have their... Like, you know, kind of like Sony, they have different... Their, you know, their yeah, some hands divisions, are tentacles right? yeah. going different ways that, you know, some are more successful than others. So you could say they are successful because, you know, like say Xbox is successful, and then, but you can say they're not successful because this one's not successful, or you yeah. know, it's like so. Well, it's you want to keep it alive. That's the problem. You right. can't have someone come in there and just start going blah, 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 and just like, oh, I'm a great CEO. I mean, you gotta have <laughs> someone that that's, has to understand, like, you know. Um, the, the big thing is the office. The office division of Microsoft is the big piece they can't mess around with. They can't mess around with that. Mm-hmm. They can't ma- mess around with the big acquisitions like Skype and um, like their database and, and their enterprise stuff. That's their bread and butter. Mm-hmm. So to be able to get that respect and still be able to like do a consumer side, which is what Microsoft has always been sucking on. You know what I mean? Like The only thing that was consumer-based that they didn't suck on was Xbox. But everything else just sucked. You know what I mean? Microsoft, uh, Windows Phone, you know, it has the right direction, but the marketing sucked. You know, like it's getting better, but like the timing of it was bad. I mean, that's the CEO's fault. He he shrugged and said, you know, he blinked an eye and said, you know, we don't need to do this right now. Oh, we need to do it. So it's it's one of those things. Google saw what Apple did and they reacted right away, and now they're they're, you know, they're riding that wave. So it, it's just a matter of. Uh, you gotta get someone that feel like that is inside, but knows, but feels like they could have had that direction if they were in there and they were like, you know, I would have done this decision if I was the CEO. Like, what would you have done if this, you know, if you know, Android and iOS just launched? You know, what I mean, would you just wait another two years? So they were in wait and see mode, and that's what happened with Bomber. He was in wait and see mode, and then and passed them. They need someone. I feel like that. I would. I almost feel like they need Bill Gates back. <laughs> that's how I feel. Wow. You can't say that. That that does actually seem like the most logical thing, though, right now, wouldn't you think? <laughs> well, where did where did Rad just go? He I said, "I need. Just... We shouldn't get Bill Gates back." And then Google said, oh. "Boom." <laughs> <laughs> Google does not want Bill Gates back, apparently, Rad. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what happened. But anyway, so we get all right. So we'll we'll definitely keep our eyes open. This is big news, and you know, news about this bombers, this well, new CEO thing is going to happen, and this is going to go on. So we'll keep you updated on what's happening there. But we got a lot of other topics here, and let's so let's move on to our next one here. Oh, <laughs> there you go, Rad. It's okay. Oh, Rad, we can hear. Just so you know. Yeah. All right. So Amazon Wireless. Amazon Wireless. Well, Amazon might be looking to get into the wireless game. Um, so this is something that has come from Bloomberg. So it's not from just like some fly-by-night or the National Enquirer. Bloomberg is pretty much <laughs> saying that um, there's some letters in here that, well, looks like Global Star is working along with Amazon to get into the wireless game. So, well, Tony, since you are a wireless guru around here, what do you think this could be? And I mean, and how much disruption do you think this could actually have? 
Well, I don't know if it's necessarily um, if it's going to be like a wireless carrier or if if it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be something that it's like a a Wi-Fi network that you're always connected to because it's it's essentially a satellite, um, or if it's also going to be carrying voice as well as you know just re- regular data. So uh, that's something that's that would be interesting to me in that it it would basically at any place that you are in the world because you're connected to this this global satellite, um, you would always have connectivity. And I guess Amazon would offset the cost, so you don't have to pay anything as long as you're okay with getting ads being fed to you, which hmm. is how they do a lot of their their hardware products at the moment. So um, this would be cool. Um, this would be interesting. And my, you know, if they get it off the ground, um, it would be before Google's supposed uh, cellular network that they're working out with Dish Network right now. But mm-hmm. yeah, it I. Uh, it would, I don't know if this would be in the race against regular carriers, though. So that's where that's that's where I'm like, I don't know if this falls under the carrier line or wireless line. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm I'm curious on how much of a disrupt because everybody always worries about Amazon getting into um, different markets, and every time everyone says, "Oh, Amazon's thinking about getting into this market," everybody's figured that's the end of that market. Amazon's going to own it. So, do you think this is just I me? Mean, from what you're able to think, even though we're not quite sure exactly where we're at, do you guys, do you guys think it's just kind of like um, going to be something that's going to happen and probably going to disappear in a couple of years, probably? No, because I mean, uh, they're not exactly ruling the tablet market, right? Uh, yes, so, I mean, with the Kindle, Kindle Fire, right? So, it's... <laughs> it just almost sounds like they're just feeling out what their options are. Okay. Well, Amazon, all right, well, we'll see. Brad, anything on Amazon Wireless? You think they should just give it up, or you think they should take it directly? Is this still directly? speculation, right? Yeah, it's, most of it's all from Bloomberg, though, so it's that good speculation. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's quite, it'd be, they'd be starting small, good right? Good speculation. So. <laughs> well, you know, speculation from uh, GigaOM versus speculation from Bloomberg is usually two different types. Right. <laughs> so... All right, well, we'll definitely see what happens on that. I mean, of course, um, just for anyone else, we do keep a lot of wireless information, and we do have a show b- dedicated to it. It actually airs on Tuesday nights, hosted by Tony Hannity. It's called the Wireless Weekly. So for more information about that, that topic has more developed as well as much, much more wireless stuff. Tony, he's the man. Come on Tuesdays, and we go ahead and um, air it there, and they go up Wednesday nights on the show. It's Wednesday night on the website, so just want to let you know about that. All right, let's take a quick break here, and then we'll hit the final group of topics, which include um, Larry Page visiting the NFL, which, if you guys haven't seen a minor game recently, um, Kevin's, a really interesting Kevin Spacey speech about Netflix and Game of Thrones. Um, we also talk, we're also going to talk a little bit about a rumor date, rumor release date for the Xbox One. And even Google might be even creating some self-driving taxis, you know? Could we really be having Total Recall? Could we really be having Johnny Cab? Johnny Cab could really be having all right, before we do, let's go ahead and take a quick break here, and let's thank our sponsor, which is Audible.com. Now, Audible.com is an excellent service. It's like a book club for, um, well, audiobooks. With it, you can you, they have over 150,000 books to choose from, and you get to, well, listen to bestsellers, new releases, all types of fiction, nonfiction, and other type, uh, many, many more books. A couple of standouts, we know the Game of Thrones books are up there, Shades of, the Fifty Shades of Grey books are up there, and quite a few different more, including biographies, bibliographies, and this goes on and on. Now, it also works on just about any device, including iPhone, Windows Phone, Android Phone, and all that. So it's a service that works on anything in your pocket. The service is great. You can even return books you don't like. And they're read by professionals and great, great people who do great jobs of getting a, telling a great story. So audible.com is a great service. We want you to check it out. This is a URL we want you to use when you do check it out. It's audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Once again, it's audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Use that URL. You get 30 days to check out the service. You get a free book, so you get to audition it and get how it is and, well, know how it works. And most important of all, hey, you get to enjoy a free book and be part of a killer service. Audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Go ahead and check it out. All right, so... Now, our next topic here. Now, Rad, this is a definitely one that you can um, add a lot to here. Looks like Yahoo outranked Google in Comscore web rankings here. So, considering how Google is 40% of the world's internet, as we discovered last week, <laughs> um, 
so yeah, so how is Yahoo taking down Google in its first Comscore ranking here? Oh, a lot of it really just comes down to unique visits. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like, for instance, we have a Comscore, right? And th th that's usually just measured based on how many unique visitors are visiting you. Now, because Yahoo has bought a, a variety mm -hmm. of, of properties, um, it becomes unique to Yahoo. <laughs> so it's almost kind of like cheesing. So, um, like, Flickr counts in there? and Yeah, but Flickr is, is not so unique, right, because they've been owned by Google for, I mean, by, by Yahoo for a while, but... Well, but they have, they have like, individual pictures, like, embedded... Yeah, that's true. Different so places, that's right? That's a very so. good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. So anytime that happens, those are all uniques, right? So if, if someone shares a Flickr picture or decides to put it into a feed and someone clicks it from a different website, say it's an embedded you know, slideshow on someone's website, those are all unique hits. What so, about what about that thing that Yahoo sent out last month or something where they said, if, if you don't re-register this account or something, we're going to go ahead and delete it. Do oh, yeah. Is that something to do with that? Yeah, it is yes and no, but it's more the opposite. So, like, for, for instance, when they delete those... Uh, they, they're not unique, but then when they come back again, it becomes unique, right? right so, yeah. for instance, I mean, you so it's you're, you're half right on that because number one, when you take them off of the list and they re-register again, they become unique. But you don't know if it's the same person because mm. it's a new IP, right? You know, what I mean, like because when you delete someone, you take their IP off. So, but they, they don't have any unless they're tracking who comes in. Like, um, Comscore can't determine that. What they can determine is that it's unique. So, but that has more to do with like user accounts, right? Not so much. Yes and no. Uh, like so, because they can't determine those. Like Comscore can't determine unique accounts unless they have the database from Yahoo, which Yahoo will never give away, right? Hmm. So the only way the only way they would know is through IP addresses and through ads and um, like click streams and you know uh, the one thing that and you guys may have known this already is the ISPs give away the IP addresses, right? Like they actually offer money for you know to actually have people dig through and say, oh, okay, these are the number of people that actually visit Yahoo. And then they'll provide it. They'll provide those numbers flat out. And Comscore gets those numbers, those IP addresses, and then parses them and says, well, how many people here visited Yahoo? And then they'll give those numbers back. Um, It'll be interesting to see the numbers between last month and this month. This yeah, week. that's the thing. So I, that's the thing that everyone was curious about was, you know, well, they just made these acquisitions, and then all of a sudden they're ahead in the comp score. You know, how long is that going to stay on? And what was last month's look like? Because, you know, they just all of a sudden showed up on the news, and this whole time Yahoo's been kind of laying low and just buying people out. So it's also possible, like, it goes back to what Tony was saying with regards to those accounts, because if they're starting to acquire more properties, the same way Google did it with YouTube, they had to combine the, all of those guys into a single login. So that's another way. Um... But yeah, it, it, it's, it seems to me that, I mean, this is a good news for Yahoo. I mean, being in the comm score, especially when you're beating Yahoo, Google, it's a huge deal. But for how long? I just don't know how long. So um, it just really depends if they could hold on to that and, and, and see. Hi. Yeah, I agree too, son. <laughs> <laughs> he has a, his little own graph and his you know, bar chart and whatnot. <laughs> Thanks, son. Okay. Hi, Owen. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for the right. analysis, buddy. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Let's see what else is happening. Oh, so this is a very interesting story here. Looks like Google is looking to – well, they're making deals or they're talking with some contract manufacturers about producing cars to, well, the self-driving spec. The comp they're, they're, they're talking to two different people, Continental, Continental AG and Magnet Magna International to manufacture a car, and well, this thing here is going to be a similar deal, similar like what what Foxconn does for Apple in production of the devices. So Google's looking to go to these people to make well self-driving cars. So some people are assuming this means this is going to be a robo taxi service, a, a la like a Total Recall Johnny Cab, if you remember the first. Total Recall. Or uh, the Sixth Day. I the automatic this. car. Oh, well, they didn't. Uh, the Arnold, other Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where you press the button, the car drives on automatic. <laughs> oh, and that was also uh, Sylvester Stallone's. Um, oh, Demolition Man. Demolition Man. Demolition Man. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't go. think of anything. Movie reference, movie reference. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, guys, Rebel Taxis, man. You, this could be having self driving cars. Google's, they're not, they try to put yeah, pressure on these car manufacturers. Nothing is happening. So, you know what? They're trying to do it themselves. They're going out and, you know, they might do it themselves. So, what do you guys think of this? Uh, Victor, are you like ex- anticipating your first ride in a Rebel Taxi or? Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not sure yet. <laughs> um, right. yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd still, I, I, I'd still think I'd be kind of freaked out in a self-driving car. <laughs> you might as well go Google all the way, dude. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> With everything. <laughs> Can you imagine what the self-driving car is going to do for the mafia? Just dump the body in the trunk and just drive it over there and they'll just do it or thing anymore. They'll just so, go into the water. Straight <laughs> <laughs> into the water, done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You just point at Google Maps this. right there. Right there. <laughs> So, okay. so Andrew, the GPS would be on all the time. Exactly. <laughs> Andrew, what about you, man? Are you are you looking forward to this? Is this something like really cool or? No, the technology sounds cool, but I'd I'd still like to be able to drive myself. Yeah. You, you want to add your own exhaust? Dang it! All right, Rad, come on, man. Are aren't you excited for a self-driving car or somebody? Yeah, man, I'm excited. Yeah. Until as long as I have the, the brake pedal in front of See? my foot. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's like you know, it's like taking, you know, the student driver, right? Oh, Except yeah. like Google's the student driver and then you're the teacher and you're sitting in the right side, but you also have the steering wheel and the brake pad. <laughs> so you're just like waiting, you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. You're speeding, you're speeding. Slow down now. <laughs> That's basically what it's like. So, um, but, but I don't know. I I just kind of curious over uh, like who's willing to do. It. I think it's probably smart for like the handicap. But then again, I probably think they would freak out even more. They freak out with people just driving. So I don't even know what it would be like for an automated car to do all the driving. And they got a Prius in the picture. Well, yeah. that's because <laughs> so at least it doesn't have to think about going to the gas station often, right? <laughs> it's all electric, right? Yeah, that that picture's old. Yeah. Oh, is it? An no. old, a very old picture. Never mind. I don't think I don't think they're looking to build a whole car though. I mean, these are manufacturers mm-hmm. of components. They're not going to GM or Ford. They're going to the guys that build the the camshafts and the pistons and all all the stuff that we don't really know who makes them. We just assume, oh, I'm buying a Ford part, but Ford doesn't make it. It's this other guy. So I think that maybe they would be. Um, creating some sort of apparatus that you can equip with another car. You know, like this is an accessory for a Honda Accord between this year and that year. And with a simple clipped here and tie down here, I don't know. But, you know, maybe something like that. I don't know if they're going to go out and... Because the car automobile industry is so cutthroat. And it's not something that they need to be in right now. And it's, it's... it's um it would be kind of like a lost cause like trying to like um I don't I can't really think of a good analogy. They can do but tons of co- they can do a bunch of stuff though. They can start doing things like I don't know tours inside NASCAR. Okay, okay. Right, you want to go tour the road? And you're like this is the perfect automated so to be Yep, car. Rad just it. You just go straight <laughs> okay. in. Okay, all right. So how about this? All right, Tony, you just mentioned a minute ago that the, um they you know well. The car manufacturer kind of this. Do you think this could be maybe disruptive? I mean, what could you think this kind of idea will finally start moving, forcing the car companies to m- start moving forward with this kind of stuff? I mean, if they start developing it and it works, I mean, we like it seems like every the car companies are entrenched in their own ways, and something usually something outside the box or something outside of it starts moving like different things forward. So I was curious, like. Do you think Google could do something with the car industry and kind of move this whole entire thing forward a little bit? I mean, you mean getting the actual main four car, car manufacturers doing, doing self self driving cars? Or and, or really take it serious? Like it takes like one person to make an electric car before everybody else starts saying, "Oh, maybe we should all make electric cars." But what if there's someone really disruptive in it, the same way that the tablet market got disrupted by Apple or something like that? And really, people are like, "Holy crap, we better start doing this now. We better seriously." Apple's doing it kind of right now. Yeah. 
So I'm just curious, like, do you, don't, do you guys think, like, maybe these components that they're building could possibly be the first step into actually moving forward and start moving these companies in the right direction? Not right, into a futuristic direction? Yeah, they probably could add a few features here and there. Like, maybe they could, you could keep the seat position <laughs> if you log into your Google account <laughs> on the car. <laughs> all your mirrors are all set for you, or and you have your favorite stations or something. But I don't know. I... <laughs> It's possible. It's very they they can. There's a couple of things they could do. I, there's still a lot of things that are missing though. Well, it looks like Uber is um, kind of hoping that this is a um, a real deal because they're possibly looking to purchase over 2,500 driverless cars from Google if 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 uh, well. Look at the date on if that. That goes article. through. I saw that and I was like, wait, look at the date on that article. I was like, what? It says posted yesterday, but the date says 2023. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I thought it was like a mock article or something. Like maybe it's something they think is going to happen or possibly could happen or they wish would happen or. Yeah, when I was looking at that article, yeah, I saw that too and I was like, is this real? I don't get this. this what is happening here? But anyway. All right, well, real quick while Tony catches up on Uber. Oh, NFL. Guys, any got anyone here watch um, football? Here. Brad? We won yesterday. Yeah. Even so though it's cool. preseason, still, yeah. it's win is a win is a win. It was a good drive. That's all. Yeah. That one drive was killer. All right, so it looks like Google might be – well, it looks like not just Google, but mainly Larry Page and um, the YouTube boss, Robert – Oh man, that last name. K Y N C L. Cancel. Huh? Cancel maybe. Cancel. Yeah, Robert Cancel. Um. <laughs> or Cancel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm butchering the hell out of it. Well, Victor heard what I just said a minute ago. Anyway, so it looks like they met up with the NFL, and it looks like the NFL Sunday ticket package was one of the conversations that this could be. So, of course, we, there's a lot that could happen here. And the NFL does a tour of all of Silicon Valley yearly to see what they could do and what they possibly could or cannot make out with other folks. But Google just got met with, just met with them. And you guys think that something could very well happen. I mean, we could very well, maybe, get Sunday ticket on more open services besides DirecTV, which, by the way, that deal ends in 2014. We're in 2013 now, so that's going to be ending very soon. So, guys, Sunday ticket on the NFL with Google. Do you guys think this could possibly happen? Yeah. Or, and if you excited? Yeah, it's possible. Very excited. Now, how much? <laughs> yes, a billion. A year. What? No, for, for us. For me. <laughs> you. For you? Do you think it will be the same, more, you less? You pay for it. No, just kind of like what they're doing now. Like YouTube pay, you pay to watch movies on YouTube. There's certain right. content that you pay for. Right. So, so, you do that way. Money. so yeah. am I gonna be? Will I have an a la carte option just to watch, like no. Niner and Raider nope. games? Or no. the NFL won't deal with it that way. Okay. So how much? They're probably I mean, gonna do it the same way NFL Replay will do it. So okay. for instance, I I'm subscribed to uh, NFL Replay, right? So you pay for either. You know, part of a season, you pay for the whole season. You pay for your team, or you pay for everything. Okay. And you know, at off the cuff, that's what fifty bucks or something for the whole season, which is awesome. You know, what I mean, and that's replays for anything, including all these things like you know, coaches clicker and all this stuff, including like you know, uh, overlays of the plays of every single play, or like shortened version or the full version. Shortened meaning like you don't see the huddles; it just goes to the next play. So, um, if 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 uh, Page went in there and said, you know what, you guys can do exactly what you want, and I'm just going to provide you the cloud, in this case, YouTube, to do it all, then that's fine. And if, there, if NFL says, okay, we, we want you to add all these controls to YouTube, we want you to have, you know, instant replay here, and we want you to have Coach's Clicker, and you can switch between each of those, like, in real time. And yeah, we have to make, I mean, then he would have to make a decision, and talk to his engineers. Can we do this? You know, so... Who gets the advertising money? Then? Well, nobody, because they would they would pay for it. It's like okay. uh, NFL wouldn't. Uh, they've had this deal so many times with all these other technology guys, and they don't want to have like advertising deals because then Yahoo and NFL would have to negotiate what kind of advertising is going to be for both of them, without any conflicting issues, right? Because 
Anytime you have advertising involved, you have to have contracts, and you're going to have to have what kind of inventory you're having. And that would mean, like, thinking, okay, we want Microsoft. And NFL is like, well, we don't have Microsoft. We don't want to deal with them because we don't want to deal with them. And, you know, and it's what about these other guys? And they're like, we, we don't want these, like, foo-foo, like, commercials messing around with the NFL. We only want the top guys. Special. We want Budweiser. We want, you know, Miller Lite. We want those guys. So, um, so my thought is that they're probably going to have to cut a deal in between where the consumer will have to pay. And you wouldn't have to deal with all the issues of inventory, which would cost way too much money to deal with. So let's say this does go through. This opens up to multiple markets, and it means that people no longer have to tie into like that specific satellite company with, with direct, yep. right? Yep. Um, okay. Do you think, however, they would limit like you won't be able to watch it on mobile? Um, you have to do it through like a, the streaming box or. No, that would be the desktop. advantage. So if I was Larry Page, I would be, mm -hmm. look, you know, you guys are doing everything yourselves. You're doing your own cloud yourselves. You're paying for your cloud maybe through Akamai, through Adobe, whatever, right? Maybe Azure. But let's say you did it with us. You did it with us. You will be, uh, we're already on everything. We're already on Xbox. We're already on PS3. We're on this. And you don't do that now. So, I mean, that's a good selling point, right? You know, you go to them and you say, this is the ability that YouTube has. This is the ability that you currently have right now. And this is how much how much are you guys spending for? Like, I mean, that's the kind of conversation he's going to be having with the NFL. Like, how mm -hmm. much are you guys spending right now, you know, to, to create this cloud by yourselves? And how much are you charging them? And how much is your operating costs? Like, we could tell you right now, we could ingest those operating costs on our side, and all you have to worry about is the design. That's how all these guys work. They always, they want to be the, the middle layer, and they're going to give him white label everything. So it won't be called YouTube. It'll just be YouTube as the cloud. And they could just say, well, here's YouTube. But if you want to use YouTube, then we can cut costs with you. If you want to just use the YouTube name, which is smart too, right? So you, you there's guys, so many ways to go about it. You guys, this is this is probably a way to get people into the paid channels to really yeah. get them into it. I mean, because they have the paid channels. They have them right there. But what if you – know, because here's first. At first when I was thinking this, I was thinking, well, what if they could do it for free? And then Rad brought up the advertising. I was like, yeah, good point. With all the advertising and negotiation with the contract, yeah, that's mm -mm. not going to happen. Not going to happen. So the paid one makes the most sense. And if you say, yeah, here's the paid TV channels. And by the way, here's your NFL paid TV channel. And you just you, – you could get on YouTube. and It kind of gets people into the entire paid idea of it and it, it's just from the thought of having a paid subscription of having the NFL there meaning mm -hmm. that I could probably just do that and I could have all these games there and possibly all the games in history at my disposal that I could watch anywhere mm -hmm. that I have YouTube that that's that almost it's a it's an pulling, enticing pulling situation the, exactly. right exactly the money's falling out of my pocket I'm trying to put it back yeah in it. I mean it's it's just easier because now you have you can access content from everywhere that's the reason why Netflix did what they did you know what I mean like like we're gonna go everywhere. Forget that. So the reason why I always why I say NFL doesn't want to do advertising except their own is because they made that same deal with Comcast. Comcast is like, we want to do this with you, and they're like, no. So then NFL's like, well, screw you, and they just left. Then all of a sudden, the contract changes. They went back to Comcast and said, okay, we're gonna deal with it. We'll do our own. You're allowing us to do the advertising, but we want you to change your packages this way. So that's why you have a sports package and all this other stuff. Hmm. So. Now, NFL want, is the type of company that wants to keep everything their way. And, you know, if, you're, if, if Google comes in and says, you know, we will provide the advertising, you know, system for you, they'll be like, no, we have our own. So for what I think will happen is if they decide to do it that way, if they make it similar to what NFL has now, they're just going to end up extending it to, you know, systems that are out there now, like, you know, like PS3, Xbox, a variety of, I mean, obviously all of Android, and um, other like Google-based services that are already on different types of like smart TVs or whatever. Um, it's a win situation, but um, I just don't know at what cost. So, and whether they use the name or not. So if they say, "Oh, YouTube," can you imagine like the impact Google would have? Oh, you know, like huge. if if they put the words YouTube inside the video when they're when they're watching a video off NFL. It would be huge. It would be. It would be huge. I mean. I don't know if NFL would do it, though, because... Well, it would be brilliant. Like, if NFL got paid enough money for it, or they just got so many subscriptions from people like us to subscribe to it on YouTube, it, it would be immense. They would make so much money. Because we would have it everywhere. And then the, the, they don't have to build a custom cloud, like you said. They don't have to do yeah. any of that custom cloud. But they don't, like, they don't care. I know, yeah. like, NFL, the way they do it, they're probably going to have be white label. Like, they don't use... 
they don't, if you notice anything, they won't use, like, they use a lot of these products, but they don't put, like, companies' labels on them because they can afford it. You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. just going to, they're going to have everything. See, the way the NFL is, it's a very high stakes, high elite type of company. So that's why when, you, when you're an owner and you buy into something, you know you're not buying into something cheap, right? You're going to get everything that comes with it. And so that includes everything with NFL.com and the NFL Network and all that stuff. So um, they consider themselves super high class. It's sort of like Apple won't put anything to blemish their products. So um, I think that's going to probably be that way. If anything, Google, they're just going to probably use like Google Compute or YouTube and change their players around and put NFL on the on the logo. I mean, on their videos as they usually do. So. But it'd be cool if they did. It'd be cool. They have the infrastructure to do it. They totally have the infrastructure to do it. Awesome. So we'll definitely keep our eyes. With the NFL mm-hmm. starting, what, in about two weeks here? <laughs> yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll see something very soon. And if the deal is too good, I'm going to be just be like, mm-hmm. thanks. And how about this? If they did local games, come on, do local games. Anyway. All that right. would be awesome. If they would do local games, that would, that would be amazing. Anyway. All right, so there was another – okay, so we had another study. Pew Research, and they have now revealed that 30% of United States adults do not have broadband internet, 10% use smartphones as sole internet access, and 20% have nada, nothing. I know those Just, people. You know yes, them. me too. I know some people. How old are those people? I'm curious, right? I mean, Tony? Um, older. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> older. That's really what it sums up down to. Yeah, that's, that's actually, true. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? This is actually very interesting. And you know what? I'm just looking at the specs of this, and this is almost going to – this it answers itself, and it really – so this is a little chart that they gave, and these are the home de- broadband demographics. Men versus women, it's 71 to 69%. It's pretty much even. Sex has no bearing at all on internet access. Next, mm-hmm. um, race, 74% of uh, white. It says black, non-Hispanic, 64%, and Hispanic, 53%. So that's what it says there, but let's not take that one instead. Let's look at the age. Eighty percent um, age uh, between eighteen and twenty-nine, between thirty and forty-nine is seventy-eight percent. And as they, as the ages gets older, would you believe it? The internet percentage drops. That's why I was asking Tony that question about how old they were. Next one: education. People with no high school diploma are less likely to have internet than people with college diplomas. Hmm. And the more education you have, the more people have internet. Look at that. Here's the next one. This is the most. I love this one here. The more money you have, the more likely you have. You're likely to have internet. <laughs> but yeah, I know. <laughs> and, elect, and how about this? And then here's an interesting one though. Urban versus suburban suburban, yep. Urban areas, a lot of internet, suburban, slightly more internet, rural areas mm-hmm. where there's not so much, not as much internet. Would you guys believe it? Wow. So there's a study for this? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, well, so they have much to, they have time to do, on it. It's probably like thousands of dollars to do this. <laughs> probably tens of thousands of. Dollars. Yes, I agree. It is in that tens of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so guys, inter- race has nothing to do with it. Income seems to have something to do with it. People who can afford internet seem to buy it. Um, education: more people who are educated seem to have more money, and I think if you have more money, you tend to want to buy internet. So would you believe it? And um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Tony summed up like the whole thing in five seconds. Yep. <laughs> Pew, I was like, thanks, man. That's what we need to hear. <laughs> Pew, you rock. Guys, the Xbox One might be out on November 8th, though. Mm. Mm. That's a week before Sony's console is going to be released. Mm. Now, this no is difference. all a rumor, but if Beat you guys look punch. at it, this was all leaked from a conference call, and in the conference call, it actually <laughs> had, like, midnight launches. It was a conference call for GameStop, and it had midnight launches in there. They were talking about midnight launches for Madden, GTA V, uh, Batman, or Arkham, um, Origins, Battlefield IV, um, Assassin's Creed, which all those things. And then on November 5th, it's Call of Duty, November 8th, Xbox One. Guys... It's happening. Makes no difference. <laughs> anyway, so, so guys, do you, oh, go on. Yes, no, right. just given the the bad press Microsoft's been getting lately. Yeah. And if somebody can only spin for one of these consoles, do you think them just coming out for somebody's gonna? I have to have a brand new system now. No. <laughs> uh, like they can't wait a week for. That's not yeah, like me. I get them both. They're not, they're not going to gain any sales because of that. They're not going to. I think they're probably doing it to get away from Black Friday. 
Or just possible. as a placeholder. Well, it just... sounds just like a placeholder. Or yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, I think it's more like a placeholder. It's like, I wonder what people think if we just leak this out. Ah, I probably shouldn't do it then. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you get a reaction, right? You can just do that and see what kind of reaction you get on the comments. Like, oh, people yeah. don't really care. Yeah, uh, people mm. don't really care. <laughs> mm. Put it out after a fact. Mm. <laughs> so well, let's, let's look at this. So Black Friday, though, is on the 29th of this year. And the Black Friday for the people in other countries, the big shopping day, starts the holiday season here mm-hmm. and all that. Anyway, so it starts on the 29th. Mm-hmm. Sony's is coming out on the 15th. They could have mm-hmm. released it on the 22nd. They can go for that day, which is really one week before Black Friday. Mm-hmm. But if they go for the 8th, they get closer to Call of Duty's release date and, you know, more yeah, Call of Duty won't Friday. be the seller, though. Yeah. It'll it'll sell, but it won't it won't be the deciding factor over, you know, who chooses over what console. Because the only differentiation is the DLC, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, the only Killzone thing three. is, on one side you have Killzone, and the other side you have Titanfall. That's how I see it. But one comes out at launch, and one comes out some point next year. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wait, does <laughs> Titanfall doesn't come out at launch? No, it's not a launch. Time. It comes out in um two twenty fourteen. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big deal then. <laughs> Time <laughs> well, to get the PS4. If I have to choose one, so, I have to choose PS4. So between this generation and the previous generation, like the PS3 and, and 360, mm-hmm. like the internet shopping was still was was already pretty big back PS3. then, right? Yeah, but mm-hmm. people were still waiting in line for oh, yeah. those ones and the yep. Wii and, and mm-hmm. all that. Do you think it's still going to be that way? Yeah, With it's this still or going to be that way. They're already doing it. Like, go on eBay right now, and there's people that have their receipts, and they're selling them. They have their receipts, and they scan it, and they put it on there, and they're saying, okay, this is where we're starting. It's starting at the price of what you would buy it for. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the year, you know, they're, I mean, by the end, by the time it reaches near launch time, you'll see those things go up to $1,000. It's because, you know, mommy's, you know, you know, mom and dad, rich, you know, rich mom and dad would say, oh, you want this, son? It's like here's one that for a thousand. I wanted one forever for my birthday, and they'll buy it. So it's that's just kind of the way it is. People will. Uh, there are people that have the money that want to follow the trend of having things first, um, and that's just kind of the way it is. And um, like we had, we had a <laughs> we had a kid, and he's always mentioned a lot on Twit. Uh, his name is Needles. We call him Needles. He just get he's he's like his dad is super rich. So he has this credit card. It's like how many, you know, and they would, and you would just say, oh, I just, I got both of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, holy crap. So I was, yeah, I was like, well, I had to earn my money. <laughs> <laughs> so, Old-fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> Looking. I mean, what? Um, so. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll see if that's actually true. Hopefully, it's true. I mean, the the consoles are about to be here. It is a big deal. I'm kind of yeah. excited for this stuff. So. Actually, yeah. I'm really excited for it. Can't yeah, wait. I am. Too. And I can't wait. To, I need to make some money. I go, hey, so how about this? So anyone listening to this, go buy my album so I can go buy a PS4 in a. <laughs> 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 All right. So now this now this next one is a pretty interesting thing. I actually saw this on um, Brad's like employment place of this week in tech. They pointed out this awesome video here of Kevin Spacey. He was giving like a keynote co- um, conversation about really about House of Cards and Netflix and how the entire media happened. Now, before mm. the show started, we actually did play the whole video clip for us just so we all can listen to it and check it out. Um, it's a five-minute clip, and there's no way we can play all of it because we'd be foolish to try that. But because of modern technology and how things are, hey, we can't play a bit of it, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Mm. I predict that in the next decade or two, any differentiation between these platforms will fall away. Talk about TV Is 13 and 13 hours yeah. watched as one cinematic whole really any different? So Underwood. <laughs> do we define film as being something two hours or less? Surely it, it goes deeper than that. If you're watching a film on your television, is it no longer a film because you're not watching it in the theater? If you watch a TV show on your iPad, is it no longer a TV show? The device and the length are irrelevant. The labels are useless, except perhaps to agents and managers and lawyers who use these labels to conduct (laughs) business deals. But for kids growing up now, there's no difference. Watching Avatar on an iPad or watching YouTube on a TV or watching Game of Thrones on their computer. It's all content. It's just story. And the audience has spoken. Oh, yeah. And last thing here. And they pretty much, the, and he kind of goes on and talks about 
how pretty much people want content and they want the control over the content. Mm -hmm. So, and that is essentially like a big deal. And another thing is he talks about like with Game of Thrones, like not, sorry, not Game of Thrones, House of Cards. He's mm -hmm. saying that he they pitched House of Cards to other people, and all the TV uh, the companies and the current people who run Hollywood were denying it and said, no, you got to make a pilot. You got to make a pilot. Pay it, spend all this money, make a pilot. Well, Netflix did not ask for that. They just said. Here's the money. We want the show. They produced all the episodes, released them all in one big shot. Done deal. He says mm -hmm. that the cost of doing Netflix's deal, it was less than the price of doing one pilot. And the sh and then most important, the people got control of the content, and it was big, and people enjoyed it. People and people watched it. And it was a big deal. Netflix made their money back on it, and they're doing just fine. Now, Victor, you are the one here who's closest to the TV industry. You almost got into a religious state when we played this the first time. And how much <laughs> you were like <laughs> supporting him and on them. So, so he had a lot to say here. What is what is your initial take on what he's talking well, about here? Part of it is, like he said, the the way that like you um, getting something through, like the. I, I don't know if you'd still call it the Hollywood system or whatever. Is you have to pit, you have to pitch the series to, um, to you know the the channels and stuff by making an expensive pilot to impress them. Um, I don't know if you remember a few months ago, like Amazon kind of did a sim like did that like by having a whole bunch of pilots. Like one of them was like a Zombie Land one or something. Yeah, and like people would choose. Um, I mean it. It's a, uh, I mean, you hear like all the time how it's a cutthroat industry. There, it's, I, I mean, like he was saying that it, you you have to pitch. If you're a content producer, you have to pitch that to the distributors to pick it up. And in order to pitch that, you have to make an expensive pilot to impress them, like he's saying. Um, and with this one, he was saying that, um, I mean, pretty much in his words too, that Netflix said, "We believe in you," and you know, here's the money just to make the make the show already. Like the savings that he's talking about is probably j on making those, you know, million multi million dollar pilots. So it's a uh, I'm and I mean bottom line is that what Netflix is doing and Amazon what Amazon is doing, um, I think it's just going to attract a lot more of the you know the smaller content producers to to say hey we have you know we have this idea of course you, you know as time goes on you're you're probably still going to have to do the big pitch you know by making it yourself at first but you know with this and with um um you know even like the arrested developments and which was already established i guess but mm -hmm. um you know you you probably don't have to spend as much now to get your you know idea across like especially since a lot of the big you know the 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 professional looking cameras are readily available to everybody um, it's just I mean bottom line is just it's a changing market and a changing um, and you know the rest of Hollywood or the television industry's got gotta you know change with it so what and why do you uh, think they're not changing um, Aside I, I mean, from the fact that they're old, or they're we, we've uh, exactly we we've talked about it before. It's like they they're they're old, and like I I think I was I was reading um, one thing is like the current CEOs that are there now they know change is on the horizon. They know change is going to happen. Like it's not you know an if it's it's a when now. They're they're just uh, some of them are just saying like not on my watch, you know. Do you th so, but do you really think it's them, or do you think because I mean, they are not. Do they go when they make these deals? Do they go straight to the CEO and make these deals, or do they talk no. to someone lower? There's that. That's why on the credits you see so many people. There's like you know the, the producer, the executive producer. There's there's like so many hands in a production that you know it has to. You know, it's like a it, it's like trying to steer a, a giant, you know, a giant cruise ship or something. It's gonna take a while. Like if you see the the iceberg too close, it's gonna take a while to get it to turn a little bit, you know. <laughs> so it's Good point. it's so there's it's there's like, so many people involved in a you know in a big budget production. So mm. in a way, a lot of what Netflix inadvertently is doing is they're bypassing a lot of the red tape. 
the, the studio the, system. The, the studio system, maybe that's what it is, not the Hollywood system. The studio system. And you, you know what, it's, uh, I mean, if for fairly recently to us, what it's reminiscent of me, um, what, what it reminds me of is when Pulp Fiction and the Kevin Smith, for, the first Kevin Smith movies came out, you know, when Miramax was getting bigger and bigger, um, it reminds me of that. It's like, you know, the, the, the small the small kids just out of film school that don't have any money, they're, they just spent like like 10 grand of their own money like to, to make this to make this movie at their, you know, at their their job, basically. Is that how Miramax started? Miramax was like that kind well, of... It, I mean, it's owned by by big... Disney? I, no, no, by, no, by the sure. wine... The, oh, Weinstein. the Weinsteins. Which Weinsteins. Netflix just... <laughs> doing, right? Yeah, they did. Right. Um, but, I mean, they, they started out with the small the small um, things. I mean... Where was I going with this? <laughs> they, they started... I mean, you see what I'm saying, right? They, I yeah. mean, they, it's that type of revolution. Like, like I said, when Pulp Fiction came out and when, you know, Clerks came out and stuff, that was like... Like uh, when when I was going through school, that's what all most most of my classmates were inspired from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I can I can do this too. And now there's a lot of us in the industry. You know, right? I, was, so, I, was, I was thinking about quoting a, a something from Clerks, and I realized, wait, there's nothing I can quote from that. <laughs> <laughs> nothing without cursing. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, there's nothing I can quote from that movie. All right, so now I get so now Kevin did make it, Kevin Spacey didn't I'm Kevin sorry, but, <laughs> first name first name basis no. well, good old buddy hey my brother's name is Kevin I get in the habit of that anyway so <laughs> Mr Spacey he talked about how like it almost it's like the move the movie industry or the TV industry needs to move forward to this the way that the music industry as he directly said in that entire thing did not <laughs> the music industry fought this entire deal and now they're in the situation they're in today. If um if Hollywood or if Missy have a lot of actors who because there are a lot of actors and aspiring actors in Hollywood and all over the world who really want to get some stuff out there currently it seems like the only way of doing that is Netflix I mean our YouTube or Hollywood one is everybody can do and you're kind of mixed in with a big mesh of many or one is so hard to get into that there's millions and aspiring people trying to get into it every single day yeah now if if more people took this method, like Amazon and Netflix, and they start financing more shows, and more people started working on delivery methods like this, this could be, like I said, like he described, more stories, more movies, more TV shows, more content available for us that we could potentially watch, and all of it would probably be able to be produced at a lesser dollar amount than is currently happening right now due to the studio system, the lawyers, mm-hmm. and all the stuff, and the pilots that currently has to happen. Mm-hmm. So this could be, I mean, in in a way, he's using House of Cards as a way of proving his point, saying, yes, this is the way that we need to move this industry. We cannot sit here where it is all day and keep this. We have to move it forward. And Netflix is trying their hardest to help move it forward mm-hmm. and give the actors what they want, ability to do the shows they want to do, tell the stories they want to tell, act out the scenes and the, the things they want to act, you know? And maybe a couple actors who don't get a chance to be in the limelight anymore. They need some Hollywood players shows. in their team, though. Huh? They need some Hollywood guys to bring more into Netflix, like, well, you know, just well, to... Well, that's, that's what's going to get the, the yeah. awareness at this point. But when the floodgates open up, I think it's going to be, like, all those, you know, all those, like, video memes we, we see all the time, like, where they, it's, like, these small-time guys that would make, like, a, a fan-made like Ghostbusters film or a fan, you know, mm-hmm. a fan made like a, a like Avengers or Superman thing. Like these people are going to start getting their work out into the mainstream. You know, with if this keeps going at the rate it's going and like, you know, when Hollywood and the, you know, the TV industry. I mean, but aren't they doing that already? I mean, you got kind of. You you have you have like, like Freddie W is doing that. You know, exactly. video game high school thing, right? Right, and, and he's or, becoming successful with it. And there's a couple, bunch of these other guys that are actually doing, um, you know, semi TV quality stuff mm-hmm. on on YouTube. You know what I mean? And they're getting their own somewhat their own distribution that way. And then Google handles all their advertising inventory, right? But, uh. I'm still wondering, like, because, like, you have... What were some of the original ones? You have 
uh, the new orange is black or something like that, right? So, right, some, yeah. And then you have, uh, obviously, House of Cards, and then the rest of the film, obviously, is uh, an established one. Hemlock Grove or something? Yeah, Hemlock Grove, <laughs> yeah. which, I mean, you see Netflix advertising blatantly when you load up your screen, right? So, but... Um, I'm wondering you need, like, an Aerie Emanuel in there and like bring a, in some more guys, you know. <laughs> I think those are, are still not, like, the little, like, you know, the 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 just-out-of-film-school guys or the, the, the guys who work at, you know, a TV station, like, a you know, a, a TV station, but they, you know, get together with their friends and make, you know, short films and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. It, those I think a lot of those have yet to get you know to the big time. Yeah, but I, I think th- I think this is the start of that. Like it, um, I mean, for lack of of a, a a better phrase, like it's almost a like say it democratizing. Dang it. I think I could say new beginnings or a new kind of. direction for them to go in. I mean, it, it's not really a new beginning because we've seen this happen before. Like when yeah. filmmaking got cheaper and we had yeah. the the floodgates open up with all the film students coming out yeah. with yeah. with you know the small films yeah. and stuff. So it's, I, I guess it will be the same thing for television, and maybe we're not going to even call it television anymore. It's just yeah. it's just videos, and or maybe YouTube's going to be the Kleenex term where it's like. Where it's yeah. like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's one on of those YouTube, YouTube things, you know. Yeah. It's one of those, like, it really like kind of is though. Because I will like Nickelodeon. I think is has been at the forefront of taking like those YouTube celebrities and putting them on, you know, mainstream TV. Yeah, and well, sometimes stuff. Like, the opposite happens. So it's like, uh, for instance, uh, we're starting to see more people uh, do more. Uh, I mean, actors. Like Julia Stiles mm-hmm. in the show called Blue. There was this other one called Inside, which was, you know, sponsored by Intel. That was also on YouTube. There, right. There's a bunch of these other little ones. They're just like uh, what I see happening is that, and this is just out of you know left field. Like Hollywood is seeing that this is happening, mm-hmm. and so we're like, let's try to experiment. You know, we have contracts with some of these guys like Topher Grace, and let's see what happens if we just try this. And they would experiment with it. I interviewed a guy in, in one of the Radical Insider episodes, and I asked him that question about, like, what will it take for the industry to kind of change, to move in this sort of direction? And he says, you know what, they just need to experiment more, and that the when they promote it, the people respond to it positively. He was talking about the show that he created. Oh, God, I can't remember the name of it. I was, it's basically a uh, uh, similar show, like 24, but it happens oh, okay. in the span of, like, uh, I guess three or four days. I can't remember the show, but he actually helped pen some pretty top shows, including things like Gilmore Girls, and he was even an actor in it. And so he was telling me, he goes, you know, when we made this deal, I asked him how he made that deal. He goes, well, you know, a friend of a friend knew people from the studio, and we wanted to get some people, and then Intel saw it, what we were trying to do, as well as some of these other tech technology guys. And he said, you know, in order for all this technology to take off, they just have to have some confidence and it might take a big player to come in there to be able to make that, to ink some more deals. Because right now, you have people from YouTube that don't know much about Hollywood or people from Netflix that still don't know much about Hollywood that don't want to just ink a deal for everyone. They want to ink only the deals that they feel like are going to be returning something for them. So that's what he was telling me. He was just saying, you know, that's what it will take. I mean, they're, if, if they're going to willing to take a you know, chance on some, like, super hot agent that they, that they can hire into... A technology house and say, you know, this one's good, this one's good, this one's not so good, you know, or well, like this I one. I mean, it's it's boiling down to distribution. That was the yeah, 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 biggest yeah. hurdle. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest hurdle for everybody, mm-hmm. like wanting to get into the industry is distribution. And because of YouTube, because of Netflix, they're giving, they're opening up distribution to more people instead of saying, mm-hmm. like CBS saying, we can only approve this many shows because. You know, Big Bang Theory is going to get another season. <laughs> CSI is going to get another season. <laughs> right. All this, you, it's like it's like being, it's like trying out for the, it's a status for, quo. You know, the baseball yeah. team in high school, but everybody who was on the varsity team were juniors last year, so they're still going to be on the team this year. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. you know, you, there's there's only a certain amount of spots, only a certain amount of hours for television, um, and this is a uh, this is this is gonna 
like I said, open up more spots. So that means more content. <laughs> Just one last thing here, and then we go ahead and have to end this here. But um, what you guys are saying is exactly what's happened to music. Right now, yeah. music distribution, regular lay people, in other words, regular folks like the people who host this show can release an album at any point whenever they need <laughs> to. But now the second part becomes promotion. So now distribution mm -hmm. channels are opening up. Now it's a matter of having better material and better promotion. So at this mm -hmm. point, if the distribution channels open up, then people are going to have to make sure the stories they write and the movies they create are that much are that good mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really stuff that people want to watch and if so then they, i'm sure they'll start getting a lot of return so and but, you know, like for our I, yeah. I actually for our audience and for like you know the gaming crowd the 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 tech crowd i think the biggest one of the best stories of what will happen in the future um happened a few years ago or last year or something the 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 filmmaker who made his fan made mortal Kombat oh yeah series on youtube yeah. And then, like, I think, was it New Line or, or the Mortal Kombat guys the saw Mortal it and Kombat they said, guys, we yeah. want you make, to make more. Yeah. And, like, I, I was at Walmart the other day and I saw it on Blu-ray. So, ultimately, by investing in himself and doing something that he loved doing, that he was a fan of, he was able to, you know, find his own way in to the industry. And I, I'm pretty sure he was already an established filmmaker, but... Um, I mean, he had established he had established like actors and stuff in there already, but it, it it's it's another way of getting through the system. So yeah, awesome. Well, I'm sure with this we're gonna see a lot more content. And I mean, hopefully, I mean, by the way, if you haven't watched the speech, you should definitely go check out the speech. The speech is a very very good one. It's very interesting. It's only about five minutes long, edited edited down. So when you get a moment, definitely go check it out. And you can just look up Kevin Spacey House of Cards like keynote, and it'll come up. All right, all right, that's it for our show here today. I would like to thank you guys all for hanging out here for us, this very, very good show here about tech, Balmer, and tech and Balmer. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit about NFL, too. So, All right, let's go ahead and give you some contact information for us. There are many different ways you can reach us. You can email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. You can call us at area code 707 722-5299. And that's 707-722-LAZY if you hadn't got that yet. We are found on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, Plus, and among many other social networks. Just look up Lazy Tech Guys, and you'll find us there. And if we're not on your favorite one, shoot us a letter at one of those emails and let us know, and we'll jump right on there for you, okay? Also, our YouTube channel, Lazy Tech TV. Remember Lazy Tech TV, because that's what you're going to want to subscribe to. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and do it now. Right? It will wait. Yep, yep. Go there you go. Good job. Thank you for doing that. All right. Go ahead and subscribe just like that person did and uh, be fantastic. So, Brad, Andrew, Tony, Victor, as always, guys, thanks for hanging out here on this night. And um, yeah. tomorrow, wireless show. Later on this week, video games. It's all going to happen. Thank you again for hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with some more fun, fun tech news, tech and all that kind of stuff. And guess what? We're out. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.